Hello to YouTube. I hope this will be a quick one. Um, I want to talk about elevations, tape measures, uh, observer heights, uh, estimations, and well, we'll see how we get on. I'm doing this live because it's difficult to do this as a, a sort of structured video. Um, there has been a lot of debate about the various elevations or heights of points along this piece of coastline, which is near the town of St. Bees on the Cumbrian coast. And gives good views across the Irish Sea towards the Isle of Man and to the south to some wind farms where wind turbines. Now, Anthony Riley is the person who has made particular claims. He has been backed up in those claims by uh, Ranty, his friend, and by Nathan Oakley, who runs a debate channel, Flat Earth Debates. And the claims that some of the claims that they have made have been um, have been apparently precise, but then become vague or vague and uh, difficult to to really pin them down on. But uh, I'll, so if I say something that is not what they have meant to say, uh, don't accuse me of misrepresenting you. Please um, come into the comment section uh, of this video and explain what you did actually mean. Explain what your claims about elevations and measurements and heights and so on is. Um, I'm not trying to misrepresent anybody here. What I'm trying to do is establish some truth. So Anthony Riley published a video back in October, which was shot, uh, as far as I can make out, from a location about here on the cliffs. He claims that this elevation is 35 feet when he shot the video. Now, that claim has to be incorrect by all methods of measuring, but the degree by which it is incorrect depends on what method of uh, establishing the height of this cliff actually is. Anthony claims to have used Google Earth. And, sorry, wrong thing. And Google Earth shows this point here, which is the point I was aiming at, OK, these are the caravans that we can see in the picture. There are other caravans that move away behind them. And Anthony was located in this area here. And if you look at his video and compare it to what can be seen here, uh, that matches very well. This is also the first level part of this path. So this path slopes upwards from this point here fairly steeply. Not very steeply, but you know, steeply enough that it would be awkward to put down a tripod and then levels out. And the point at which it levels is uh, is likely to be where he took his video and it certainly matches where he took his video. Google Earth gives a height at that point of 11 metres. And we can use the Metabunk calculator to convert uh, metres to uh, feet because his claim was 35 feet. And if we put in 11 metres, convert it to feet, we get 36 feet. Well, 35, 36, I'm, I'm easy ozy with that. That's uh, much the same um, height. So does that mean Anthony was accurate in claiming a, an elevation of 35 feet from this point? Well, no, it doesn't. Because that is the elevation given on Google Earth to average sea level or a, a, um, a, a datum which effectively is at average sea level. And the tide was out when Anthony took his video. It might not have been perfectly, completely at low tide, but it was certainly uh, near to low tide. And so there must be a, um, some other height to add to for the drop between average sea level and the actual sea level he, uh, when he took his video. He also had the camera mounted on a tripod. And even if that tripod was, was set at waist height, it's another meter, another three feet. So we can say that Anthony's claim of 35 feet is incorrect. 
right from the outset, even using Google Earth, which seems to be the method that he wishes to use uh, for uh, establishing the elevation at this point. So now we come on to the issue of Google Earth. Is Google Earth accurate? Well, Google Earth itself tells you it's not accurate for elevations. Uh, it claims that uh, elevations might be inaccurate by as much as 30 meters in each direction. So that's a total of 60 meters potential inaccuracy, if you like. But for any given point that Google Earth gives an elevation for, you, it might be 30 meters higher, it might be 30 meters lower in reality. That's what Google Earth says. So to, to, to use Google Earth as a means of a determining your elevation, if you're trying to be accurate to less than a 30 meter plus or minus 30 meter uh, error, if you're trying to be more accurate than that, then it's pointless using Google Earth. It cannot do the job for you. It's very easy to see how inaccurate Google Earth is. The hand here indicates the elevation. And if you look down on the bottom right corner of the screen, down here, you see there is an elevation. It says elev and then uh, has a number in meters. And if I move the cursor over the terrain, that number changes. So if we place the, uh, the hand here, we get an elevation of eight meters. And if we place the hand here, we get an elevation of 11 meters. And it never gets a really above 11. It goes to 12 beyond the path. But it doesn't go much above until it goes right back here. But in this area here, it's saying 11 meters. And that's what Anthony is claiming, 35 feet. Eight meters, 11 meters, that's a three meter difference. So according to Google Earth, the height of this cliff from here down to here is three meters. And it doesn't take a genius to spot that that's wrong. Um, the height of one of these caravans is going to be at least three meters. And clearly you could fit in a whole bunch of caravans to get to the bottom of this. Google Earth is not accurate and should not be used as a means of establishing um, an elevation. Uh, not, not to that level of precision. Now, if you're claiming that you're on top of a mountain that is uh, 3000 meters above sea level, then plus or minus 30 meters does not make much difference. But if you're claiming to be just 35 feet above sea level, then 30 meters plus or minus does make a huge difference. Anthony has not only claimed the Google Earth figures for here are correct. He has claimed that he has been there with a tape measure or maybe more than one tape measure and made measurements that support the Google Earth um, figures. His claim about a point on the cliffs, he was actually asked specifically about this high point on the cliffs. Uh, I asked him and his response was to say, Anthony goes by the moniker um, Sleeping Warrior and he's addressing me saying, all you need to know is a 60 feet, six feet length made it to the bottom and there was tape left over considerable tape left over. Now, I asked him specifically about the high point on the cliff. I asked him specifically how what, what he got with his tape measure from the high point on the cliff up here. And that was his response. Now, he might have been responding about another point somewhere along the cliff, and that might have been the point that he actually measured. In which case, Anthony, tell me where you got that less than 66 feet measurement. I dispute that this point where he took his second video and this point where he took his first video, I dispute that either of them could give a value of less than 66 feet if you measured with a tape measure from the top of the cliff 
to the uh, beginning of the pebbles on the beach. And I do that based on Ordnance Survey maps. So if we look at an Ordnance Survey map of the area, this is the area where he took his first video, and this is the area where he took his second video. Contour lines are at five meter intervals, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 meters above average sea level for his first video. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, over 30 meters where he took his uh, second video. And if we look at uh, Google, uh, Google Earth, Google Earth only gives um, 11 meters here and 15, 16 meters in this area here. The Google Earth is inaccurate by a few meters uh, in, according to Ordnance Survey. How much are those heights? In, uh, in feet, just if you want the conversion. Well, a 25 meter, and this is above average sea level, remember, this is not above the actual sea level for low tide. 25 meters is uh, 82 feet. And 30 meters is 98 feet, 98 and a half feet. That's just the heights from the Ordnance Survey map. We also have to add onto that the uh, height of the tripod and the height of the, uh, um, the sea level, the actual sea level, how far below mean sea level is it? Because these contour lines are based on mean sea level. So, Anthony has claimed uh, heights matching Google Earth. He has claimed to go with a tape measure and gain uh, uh, measurements that uh, support the Google Earth uh, heights. And I am here stating that uh, I don't think his measurements with the tape do can possibly support the Google Earth heights. Google Earth is known to be wrong. You can see it's wrong when you actually do the elevation measurements um, on Google Earth uh, and compare them to, to um, photographic evidence and other evidence and, and ordnance survey. So I don't think his measurements do support Google Earth. And finally, I'd like to talk about this one point here. I made an estimate for a video that Al K shot and that I have shot um, from this point, looking at wind turbines to the southwest. And I made an estimate that we were, the camera height was about 40 feet above what the uh, actual height of the sea was at that time. I acknowledge it's an estimate, uh, but it's an estimate based on available information particularly two sets of available information. The first set is a measurement of the height of steps up to here, a height of further steps up to the tea house, and a height from the floor level of the tea house up to here. And this gives us a measurement between this point on the beach and the level here. And that measurement uh, comes to um, in excess of 30 feet. The sea level was lower than this point here. Even at high tide, most of the time, it's lower than this point here. And it was not high tide at the time, and not low tide at the time. So I have added a few feet on for the difference in height from here to the, where the sea actually was. And I also added on three feet or so for the height of the tripod to get a, um, an estimated elevation of 40 feet. So that's one piece of, of information. The measurements actually made at the site itself, 
plus adding a bit for tripod, plus adding a bit for uh, the, the tide height. The second piece of information is, of course, the Ordnance Survey map, which shows 5, 10, 15 meter elevation to here. That's 15 meters above average sea level, but we know the tide was not out halfway. It was less than halfway out. It was between high tide and a halfway point. So we are somewhere between 10 meters and 15 meters. I split the difference. Uh, a plus a, a plus a meter for the tripod height. So splitting the difference, we say somewhere around 12 and a half meters, perhaps a little bit more, perhaps a little bit less. And again, if we go to the Metabunk um, and use it as a converter metric to Imperial, we put in 12.5 meters, we get 41 feet. put in 12 meters, get 39 feet. And it seems quite reasonable given the information that we actually have from Ordnance Survey that this uh, height is, is uh, about 12 meters above where the sea was. And our tripod would have been uh, another meter or so. Um, so 40 feet is not an overestimate. Uh, Anthony Riley has claimed to have measured this without specifying how he measured it as 29 feet. That figure of 29 feet is in rough agreement with Google Earth, which has a figure of 8 metres or 26 feet for this height above sea level. But we know Google Earth is inaccurate for that sort of elevation. So Again, he, he, but he claims also to have measured this with a tape measure. So if he's measured this with a tape measure, what did he measure and how did he calculate the vertical height and how did he know what height the sea was at the time that we shot the video? Maybe he's just using a, an estimate in the same way that I, uh, based on what I have said about the tide height at that point. Question is, what did you measure, Anthony? Please, can you give a specific, clear answer? Better still, show us a video or, or photographic uh, evidence showing clearly what you have measured and what measurements you obtained. Um, but if, if, you, if you don't have the video or don't wish to present the video, at least make it absolutely clear what you are claiming. You've claimed this is 29 feet above uh, the, the actual sea level at the time, I dispute that. Um, you have claimed on the basis of Google Earth that this is 35 feet above the actual sea level at the time you shot your video. Again, that is you know, it's demonstrably wrong and I would, I would place it more than twice the heights that you have claimed there. And finally, you've made assorted claims about the height of this not least you've claimed that this height is exactly the same as this height, which is very obviously wrong. Even Google Earth doesn't claim that. Uh, but you have made a number of claims which seem to relate to this, claiming that this is less than 66 feet in elevation. And again, I, I dispute that. And I dispute that anyone who has taken a tape measure to this point and tried to measure the, the height of the slope here could possibly conclude that it is less than 66 feet. So I would love to know what you measured, I would love to know how you measured it, and I would love to know um, uh, precisely what your claims are for those elevations and what your claims are for the observations that you made. Your original observation well, based on the video shot from here, was that you could see Ireland. You, I believe, have now been convinced that what you can see is the Isle of Man. And you are now claiming that you should not be able to see that part of the Isle of Man from this point. Um, I have shown that you most certainly should see the Isle of Man from that point. Uh, not much of it, 
only the uh, tops of the hills poking up over the horizon, but you can in fact see those hills. The, we're talking about the hills at the north end of the island, not the main hills on the Isle of Man, which are visible uh, very clearly and from some distance away. There have also been claims made about the Malgold Lighthouse, and I'm in the middle of making a series of videos about that. Um, <clears throat> the Malgold Lighthouse can be seen from, or well, part of it can be seen from this uh, point on the cliff. Depending on the particular tide conditions, you can see more or less of it. And that's exactly what this ferroid Earth model predicts. Um, you cannot see the Malgold Lighthouse from this point on the cliff, or I have been unable to see it uh, even at uh, low tide. And that is, again, exactly what the spheroid Earth model predicts. Um, so please, uh, let's see exactly what claims you want to make about your Isle of Man videos. Now that you have accepted that they are indeed videos of the Isle of Man, and what claims you are making about the elevations of, from, uh, of, the, of you as observer when you shot those videos. Determining what is true about reality means gathering the, as, as accurate um, information as we possibly can. The videos you have shot uh, show <coughs> accurately what the camera was able to detect. But in order to make any conclusion about uh, whether that supports a flat earth or a spheroid earth means knowing as accurately as we can know what the observer heights actually were on this piece of coast. So Anthony, help everybody out here be completely uh, open with what you actually have measured and what you have actually seen. And then we'll be able to examine that and see whether it supports a spheroid Earth or a flat Earth.